years, the United Nations has recognized World Population Day as an annual awareness day to spread information about population-related issues around the world. Now, those issues relate to overpopulation and underpopulation. This year's theme recognizes family planning, hence the title, Family Planning is a Human Right. Significant progress has been made since the first International Conference on Human Rights 50 years ago. But how accessible are both in Sierra Leone and Africa above all? And does it impact the fertility of women or the health of children? Well, the Minister of Health speaks on this and we'll take the clip and we'll be back shortly. Today, 11th of July 2018, we celebrate World Pop Population Day. The theme of this year's celebration is family planning. It's a human right. 50 years ago, the United Nations International Conference on Human Rights resolved that parents have a basic human right to determine freely and responsibly the number and the spacing of their children. This resolution Im implies yes to planning by the family and a big no to planning for the family. Family planning thus became a human right for the couples to exercise, not population control to be imposed by the state. You know, this itself is a game-changing realization. Women and girls have the right to avoid exhaustion and the danger of too many pregnancies too close together. Men and women have the right to choose when and how often to embrace parenthood. If they so desire, if they want it at all. Every individual has the human right to determine the direction and scope of his or her future in this fundamental way of life. So today, as we celebrate World Population Day, we are effectively comm commemorating with the rest of the world that this is a landmark agreement. We celebrate the World Population Day to ensure that future generations never take this hard-won human right for granted. It has to be noted, however, that even after tremendous progress being made from 1968 to date, hundreds and millions of women, men, and young people all over the world, including those in Sierra Leone, are unable to exercise this right. They still have millions of women, even in, in our con con country, that lack the access to basic contraceptives. Therefore, family planning information and services cannot be restricted on the basis of race, sex, political affiliation, age, economic status, etc. Family planning in itself is, is a service that must be available, access, accessible, and acceptable to all. Um, such implications, therefore, suggest that we should respect human rights. We should respect the implications of such rights. And we cannot deny access to contraceptive services based on lack of authorization from either the husband, the partner, the parent, uh, or if, in fact, the woman is unmarried. We should protect human rights related to family planning by ensuring that third parties do not limit people's access to contraceptives and to fam family planning. Today, we join the rest of the world to, to celebrate this landmark resolution to provide the required family planning and sexual reproductive health services by government to 1,300 1, family planning clinics. We also want to confirm that government is working to address the supply chain to ensure that the required con contraceptives of the right quality are available throughout this country, irrespective of how remote the area you find yourself. Today, therefore, is a commitment by the Ministry of Health to young people 
that, and especially to adolescent girls, that we will strive to ensure that your rights to good quality family planning information and services are upheld without fear of exclusion and stigma. We are determined to work with all Sarai Leonians to reduce the unacceptably high maternal mortality in the country. Please recognize that His Excellency the President, Brigadier Retired Julius Madabio, in his inaugural address in May, clearly highlighted that as a nation, we must work out to provide um, 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 adequate health services for women and girls. Finally, let us all join hands to uphold the right to family planning services. And for all our citizens and partners, in particular the UNFPA, to ensure the health and the well-being of our women and children. I thank you. Welcome back. This is Wake Up Sierra Leone, and you just heard from the um, Minister of Health there, Dr. Alpha Wuri, speaking on the importance of World Population Day, which is being commemorated today um, all over the world. Now we have in the studio Safia to Agnes Fode, who is the Program Officer, Sexual Reproductive Health, UNFP, and she's here to speak with us about the day. Good morning and welcome to Wake Up Sierra Leone. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. All right. Now, this year's theme is talking about um, reproductive health, family planning. And, you know, it is saying family planning is a human right. So uh, could you just speak about how that translates, in, translates into a human right? Thank you very much. Um, simply to say, family planning is a human right means every couple or every family has the right to decide the number of children they want and how far apart they want these children. All right. How does that affect probably the daily life or um, the lifetime of a family or an individual such as a mother um, when it comes to probably how he, she spaces the birth of her children? Um, generally, uh, proper spacing of uh, children actually uh, give, uh, makes the mother look very healthy because it gives her time to look after her very self. But if family planning is used by a girl or a woman, it actually helps her to empower herself. It gives her time to acquire the required skills she needs to, uh, to actually take care of herself in the future. So as a, as a rule, when we talk about women's empowerment and women's contribution to the family, if she does not have the right education, the, num the right number of children, if she is not um, economically stable, she cannot be able to provide a viable contribution to that family. So we are saying specifically for women, as you say, family planning is good. Okay, but how about the men? You've mentioned for the women. How about for the men? It also supports their financial capability. It releases all burden on them because of the number of children they actually plan for. All right, so now today is World Population Day and the theme is looking at, like Antonio said, rep reproductive health, family plan planning in particular. So is there any relation between family planning and population control? Or is that one of the major reasons why we see the, you know, massive, um, you know, push for proper family planning? Sure. In a way, I want to say sure again, because if we have of pregnancies we want, we are able to control the future. Uh, as a centre part of UNFPA, we push for voluntary family planning services because we will be able to harness demographic dividends if we have the right population at the right time. All right, for now, how, how acceptable is it? Um, UNFPA cuts across many countries around the world and have a huge stamp in, in Africa. How acceptable is family planning in Africa, more so Sierra Leone, given the culture we have where, um, you know, if you go in the provinces, the more children you have, the more um, probably wealth. <laughs> wealth you have or money status is, is, or importance is placed upon you? UNFPA is pushing very hard. 
Yet, over the world, we have over 212 million women who still need family planning, but they don't access it. And in Sierra Leone, to be particular, we have over 25% women who want family planning, and they don't access it. Meaning either they want to space, or they want to limit their birth. But these women are not having family planning. So as UNFP, we are really pushing to reach the fathers, to make sure we reach the, the last people, and we leave no women behind. So we want to join the government to push that idea and to push that concept so that we reach, we reach every woman wherever they are. You mentioned 25%. What about the 75%? And what of those who don't even know about family planning? Well, I am looking at those who are not using family planning. There are some who are using family planning for spacing, and those are the few people we are talking about, 75%. And most of them, interestingly, know about at least one contraceptive method. But it is, easy, it is difficult to actually translate knowledge into behavior. So we are saying we want to push more. You know about the services, but you are not taking it. So we want to see how we can market the commodities to you so that you make an option. You know, there, you there are a lot of conspiracy theories when it comes to um, family planning or sexual and reproductive health. People um, think it is a Western idea to just limit the African population and are not really um, supportive of the idea. And so uh, besides this being a human right, as UNFPA has said, and as um, the theme of the World Population Day goes today, what other importance does it have um, in the general human life? That's a myth for people to actually think that as a way of birth control, family planning do not um, tampers birth. It says to you, just have a baby when you want to have them. Just have babies when you want to have them. So we are saying, you want to start when you want to start and stop when you want to stop. But how do you do that? At the same time, we don't want to interfere with your, with your, with your reproductive right, with your sexual right. So we want to say, in as much as you are in sex, you are sexually active, you need to use um, a pro, um, contraception, you need to use contraceptives to be able to, to delay, to space. We are not saying stop. Family planning does not interfere with your, with your fertility. Now, yeah. but some research is coming out and some school of thoughts are coming out with the opinion that yes, it does, especially long-term use of contraceptives such as your, your pills, eventually when you do win off, off um, get off it and want to have kids, you can't. This is, this, is, this is a new one, maybe you've read the paper, I've not read, but I don't have that information. What I know is that when you use a contraceptive, first and foremost, I want to maybe bring to our knowledge here is, Contraceptives are just an artificial form of what our bodies compose of, the hormones our bodies have, our sex hormones, our reproductive health hormones. So it's like just making sure that you are on a natural, the brain stimulates itself on the artificial um, product to say yes, at this level we have progesterone high, we have estrogen high. So what we're saying, the moment you withdraw that one, you stop taking it without any interference. What is the what what causes the um, infertility? The bottom line of that one is sexually transmitted infection. So um, we actually put it as a package that, in as much as you are on contraceptives, it is important that you also prevent yourself right. from STIs. Now, so I am saying uh, there is no much interference in that one, except you do a permanent um, method of contraception. All right. There like, also claims that using contraceptives has its own side effects or after effects. Some people um, testify of weight loss or weight gain, um, there are hormonal imbalances, there are changes in the menstrual cycle. So is that true? That is, that is true. For so every medication or every drug you take has a side effect. But side effects are not complications, interestingly. That's the difference. When once you stop it, it goes off. So we are saying if you um, um, experience side effect, a, a greater part of the side effect, we withdraw you on the method and we change, we, we talk with you and you take a better option that suits you. But some, most of it has got, they've got side effects. Okay. Now, what is the engagement with men, given the fact that there are quite a number of men who are not supportive of their women? You'd find 
women do know about perception, but the men who obviously partners are not willing to be supportive. Take, for example, probably condom. You find some men who tell you, I don't use condom. And the women uh, are compelled to probably have sex without condom. Well, that is quite interesting. That is why we are pushing for women to understand or uh, people who are in sex to understand that condom use is a better way because you don't know the status of people. You get my point? And so if a man comes to you, you don't know that person and you have not been in a relationship before and says to you, can I sleep with you without a condom? Be rest assured that you are picking up one thing among the rest of the STIs. So you as a woman should be more assertive to say no. It is not only sex. This is a one-time thing. It will, it will finish in the next 15 minutes. I've not seen somebody who stays in sex for 10 hours. So uh, imagine yourself, if you are somebody who's supposed to, to live for the next 75 or, uh, years, looking at what the Bible says, it means if you trap yourself in an STI at 15 or 17, so for the rest of the 60 years in, of your life, you are in disease. So think about that as a woman and think about that as a man. Sex is a pleasurable thing. So do it free of infection. So in terms of condom negotiation, you should be powerful in that one. Say, let's use condom. Or if you know the status of that particular partner, remain faithful to that partner. All right. And so when it comes to, because you just, you just said, you know, after effects are not um, complications. Um, there are claims that some, when people get the implants for um, family planning, such as um, I don't know what 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 the name is, the medical name for it, the implants they give here in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes when they take it out, there there is bleeding um, for a period of time. Is that normal as well? Yeah, irregular bleeding for for hormonal contraceptives generally is typical. Some, some have got spotty bleeding, some have heavy bleeding. But it will last for some period and goes on. They do come to clinics or them to clinics or they are being referred to clinics uh, for a little bit of management. Is there, so is there on. any research ongoing to improve family planning services um, or medicines to improve the um, probably after effects or side effects? Uh, is there any research going on probably with the UNFPA? Well, UNFPA particularly is not manufacturing um, contraceptives, unfortunately. But uh, manufacturers and researchers are working all day, 24 hours around the clock, to see how they can improve. And you can agree with me that contraceptives 50 years down the line uh, we are more, had more side effects than those that are coming up. And we are sure that those that will come in the future again will have less side effects. So researchers are working on them. So what are the different contraceptives available? And which would you say is the most popular, probably the safest um, for, for you? Yeah, for, for a quick one, I am not here to, to prescribe the safest contraceptives because contraceptives use is on a case-by-case -case base. We tailor it according to your need. Even if you walk to a clinic to say, I want Jadel as an implant, when we subject you to um, screening and we check on the medical eligibility criteria, if you do not fall within, if you are not eligible for its use, you are for the cancel for another method so that you use what fits you best according to your history because we we have to look at histories medical history social history you know to, to be able to to cancel you better for a method but methods in Sierra Leone are we have um, injectables the injectables in Sierra Leone we have the depot the depot Pivera and the net the depot Pivera is a three month one and the norestirat is a two month one we have the implant Quite recently, we have introduced level plant, which is another implant. But we used to have, over the last seven years in this country, we had Jadel as the only implant. But we now have level plant, which is a three-year implant. Jadel is a five-year one. And we will be, we will be introducing a subcourt, you know, um, um, depot again, we call it Cyana Press, in the next few months. That will form part of the injectables. And in addition to that, we have pills. Among the pills, we have microgynol and microlute. Then the microgynol and microlute will say mini pill and
combined pill. So, and the microgynon for say, per se, you will not meet microgynon maybe on the shelf, depending on how the manufacturer actually label it. It will be titled maybe Zinaf because that is a combined contraceptive. So those ones you will find on the on the shelf. So I am saying we have injectables, we have pills, we have implants. In and addition to that, these, emergency all of these are for women. Yes, and condoms uh, for male and women. Just condoms for 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 the men. Unfortunately, we would not be able to get researchers to do uh, contraceptives for men. But we do encourage men who are highly fertile, and if they have actually uh, convinced within themselves that they have reached their reproductive life and they have the number of family size they want, we want to encourage them for vasectomy. Oh, what is that? That, that is a permanent a contraception for a man. You go for um, the type But don't you think um, an improvement or more creation of um, contraceptives for men would also make them responsible or would also transfer some responsibility? on their side because there are so many times and if when I, this reminds me of your question i did not finish answering your question yeah. the role of men in family planning we are encouraging men through our partners to i mean to actually come on board on family planning and we have seen um, tremendous um support from men there's a particular ip we work with um finds Leone as a male engagement they have her husband schools there we that's that's the organization you actually see men fully engage in family planning. They support their women, they take them to family planning services, they remind them. There are times they go and collect their own um, um, contraceptives for their, like pills. They pass on the way and say, okay, I've come to collect the pill for my wife. So they are fully engaged. We are saying, if more men come on board, then at, at least the women save their time and there is a relationship in the family. Because some women still come to the family planning and say, I don't want my man my husband to hear about this and we want to stop that we want men to see that it is for their own good and for the good of the nation right so in commemoration of the day today are there any activities planned by the unfpa right series of activities are lined up and we 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 actually we've actually done few and uh, this week heightens the the rest of the activities like the radio and tv discussions and we are having a, a big launch of family planning program in Cambia. The district where we, the reason why we chose Cambia district is that according to DHS in this country, Cambia district is the district that, that has the lowest contraceptive prevalence of 5%. So we want to see how we can push that district to come up a bit. That is why we are inviting a government officials and other ministry officials to actually attend that main launch in Cambia. We are also having mini launches in four, three other districts, including Cambia. We are having a launch in Kono. It's another low contraceptive prevalence district. We have one in Moyamba and one in Koinadugu, they have to, that will be followed by outreach services. We want to take services to the Dell State for potential family planning clients. And um, on top of that, we will have a, a family planning float using the Kekes. Interestingly, all of our, including our resident coordinators, will be in Keke that day to see how we want to push family planning from who, the people we refer to as uh, um, grassroots, and they are not grassroots, and onto the top level. So we'll be working with the KK to actually advertise family planning on that day. Now, you, that will happen on the 20th. When, when you say family planning, some people be of the opinion that it's, um, you know, contraceptive use just for family plan, of course, their family. Um, and you've mentioned some districts that, you know, the UF, UNFPA will be visiting, but we do have districts where there are high cases of unplanned and in many cases, teenage pregnancies take, for example, pot lockers. So the fact that it is family planning, does it um, kind of um, disqualify or does it limit the work of UNFPA in reaching out to those sect of people, probably like teenagers, um, like the youth who, you know, are in, in, involved in indiscriminate sex activities? No. We, we have uh, um, identified this for, to work in this four district, not because what local is of less importance. We will be doing um, activities uh, in Port Loco and the rest of the countries, but as normal family planning services for people. But uh, bringing up the issue of teenage pregnancy, I want to say that is in the center of UNFPA, 
because one of our mission statement is that we want to actually fulfill, make sure the potential of a young person is fulfilled. And how do we do that? We want to help them to get to where they want to get to until they, until they, they actually say, yes, I'm ready for back. So we are saying in as much as we are focusing on these four districts for this number of days, I've highlighted three days outrage and all of these activities. But Loco is not silent. Bond Island is not left out. Other activities are, are carried out in those as normal family planning services. All right. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us this morning. She is Agnes Safia Tufode, the Program Officer for Sexual Reproductive Health at UNFBA. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. All right, we do Good have ladies. a poem done by Vicky the Poet, mm -hmm. the young girl who lo loves to write and recite poems. And she did this poem to commemorate um, the World Population Day today. Patriotism. It has no room for nepotism. It does not tolerate tribalism. Patriotism is nationalism. It is like the sun. It brightens our day like the moon. It lightens our night. Patriotism gives sight to our insight. Being patriotic is to be optimistic. I am not trying to be pessimistic, but the lack of it. Our land will turn into wilderness, left to wilder and hinders by heart of bitterness. Patriotism is to give in your soul towards nation building. And please be bothered to appreciate the work of thy brothers. Show love not only to your mother, but also to others. The ants are patriots to their colony to satisfy your nation at the expense of your generation is no felony. So instead of following the foreigns on the social media, why won't you follow me? I need your support, so please give it. Do not borrow me. To be more realistic, being patriotic is to be unique. It blooms our inspirational fragrances and hinders our doubtful hindrances. Patriotism maximizes efficiency and marginalizes deficiency. Patriotism is the ultimate key to unlock the world of transformation within a nation, within a limited time duration. Be patriotic. On this beautiful day, I support the United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA, to celebrate World Population Day.